Your home is more than just walls and a roof. It's a sanctuary that shapes your mental well-being. Rooted in environmental psychology, the psychology of space explores how design, color, and layout influence your mood. Biophilic design, which brings nature indoors with plants and natural light, can uplift your spirits. On the flip side, clutter can weigh you down, causing stress and anxiety. Ever wonder why you feel calm in a blue room? That's color psychology at work. Blues and greens soothe, while reds and oranges energize. Lighting plays a role too. Natural light boosts mood and productivity, and even artificial bright light can ease depression and anxiety. The layout of your home also matters. Open spaces encourage social interaction, while cozy corners offer privacy and security. Remember, your environment mirrors your emotional state. A harmonious home not only serves your functional needs, but also elevates your mental well-being. So take a moment to assess your space. It might just be the key to unlocking a happier, healthier you. Matthias, did you have additional slides to share on the subject of on the feeling? on the topic? Yes, we agreed that I would have something, and if I could have the slide deck, please, I can I can walk you through some thoughts that that are around the idea of of our mental well being and how we relate to the world surrounding us. So, research of of environmental psychology consistently suggests that. The buildings and the spaces we inhabit support us best when they echo the scale and the tone of the of the natural world through inspiring form through light through dimension philosophies as you know world cultures are rooted in this and the concept of biophilia although still fairly new in the west is not a new concept it's 2500 years old um, eastern philosophies that cherished healing potential for for um, nature inspired design for example in buddhism we embrace the concept of impermanence as a philosophy and in design life is ever changing and its fleeting moments they are captured in in architecture this is a residential project of ours um where you know impermanence can be on the left hand side through through the quality of light the quality of natural light um, at any given moment in time it can be about the time but it's, it can also be about the spaces we design on the right hand side so um, the idea that a space for momentary relief is a good thing if I, you know, if I have the luxury to ascertain um, in that in that momentum. What we do practically um, along the lines of impermanence, this is a physical model for a housing project, a, a townhouse project. What we do practically is um, uh, really uh, look for ways that can promote flexibility and flexibility um, that captures impermanence. Um, so this is the working model. Um, and what, what we do in this model building process here is um, for this specific project in the, in the upper left-hand corner, removable or movable walls um, that you can see in the floor plan excerpt in the lower right-hand corner where um, there's sliders that that can um, enclose, open, um, enclose to the outdoors, or provide um, a, a moment of of retreat within the spaces. Um, when so when 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 Katie earlier said, you know, when when she comes to hotel room, the first thing she does is we organize the space. That's the kind of ability we are looking for when we design homes. The the ability that. Um, the users can rearrange and can reorganize and that things are not necessarily fixed. And um, what these images here of the same project, what they, what they document is just, you know, the, the relevance, the importance of access to the outdoors, access to fresh air, access to daylight, um, access to natural plants. All of those, um, as we learned earlier, affect our health, our well-being, our um, reduce our stress. And um, these are these are the important moments in in uh, the world that I'm living in in the design world um, uh, as we um, as we ascertain how to how to create harmony how to create balance. 
in in Taoism, as you know, nothing is forced. Everything grows from within and is in a is in, is in a perpetual state of of flow. And um, sometimes growing from within is about recognizing that that vernacular. And our this is an example here of our work in Southeast Asia. Um, Lotte Center Hanoi, where with the curvilinear tower form, is a cultural reference of the Aosai, the Vietnamese long dress on the left hand side. So, again, environmental psychology suggests that buildings support us best when they echo the scale and, and the tone of the natural world through um, inspiring form, light, and dimension. Thank you. Thank you for the visuals. Leo, I love the idea of confronting one's relationships with things versus kind of just, you know, packing things away, putting it into the garage, putting it into a storeroom and not having to deal with those feelings. You can just repress things. I think oftentimes mm. we find that that's easier. Do you find that over time, is it like a muscle? Is it a skill that you've just become better at over time? Yeah, I actually think this is why clutter builds up uh, and why we have hoarders. Um, and, you know, this is just a putting off of dealing with something, which is an emotion that feels a little bit overwhelming. So that stack of papers that we talked about earlier, it's this, um, it feels overwhelming to deal with that. And so we push it off and then we have another stack that builds up and we push that off. And the same thing with our clothes and everything else starts to pile up because they all contain uh, stress or overwhelm or some kind of aversion. And so we, um, we, we have a tendency and we, have, we create these habitual uh, like uh, mindset around not dealing with stuff. And this is not just with clutter. This is with messages and emails, with tasks and chores and everything in our lives. Oh, don't look in my inbox. <laughs> it has become yeah. like a way to like shrink away from life. And so the great thing about this kind of thing is that you can actually start to change that and consciously choose to practice with something that overwhelms you one little step at a time. Um, deal with those things that you haven't been wanting to deal with, like that stack of you know, like medical bills. And you're just like, I don't have the money for all of that. Um, or like, you know, a bunch of tasks where you have to get back to people and you just don't know what to do with all of that. And so it's uh, as we work with this, we actually um, increase our capacity to be with stress and overwhelm with calmness and love. And it, it takes a little while, but it's a training. And I actually think, think that's one of the most powerful things about minimalism. Um, not that everyone has to practice it, but that it actually has us turn towards something and practice with it. And eventually, like, it doesn't have to hold us back. We'll find the next level of, of our edge where uh, we're getting confronted. Um, so um, I think it's an incredible training. Katie, you mentioned you love crystals. Like, how? How do crystals in your home um, add to your well-being? Well, um, the thing I love about crystals is they come from the earth. They're actual live beings and they're eternal. Um, different crystals have different elements. And along if you if you blend the two with that and feng shui, well, all of this actually, <laughs> and feng shui. And again, I'm not an expert. Mark would know more about, about that, but um, you can use them. They're beautiful to look at as well, but you know, having different colors with different elements and placing them in the right space, uh, I think would really, you know, I think it really, it adds to your environment. It, it, they're also very healing and calming. Um, it depends on what crystal you're, you know, identifying with or at what time, I think it's all relative. Um, but I wanted to touch on, first of all, Leo, thank you. I appreciate you saying all this because I, it made me just realize not only, so my physical world, I definitely have gone through and continuously always go through decluttering and uh, minimalizing, but 
my desktop and my inbox and unsubscribing to, <laughs> I think the other day I spent an hour and a half unsubscribing because I will have 175 emails in the morning when I wake up and I'm like, it's really just, you know, and I have to like shuffle through of what's junk, what's not, what's, and having a total, having that little red uh, number on my inbox causes me so much anxiety because it'll say, I think now, hold on, let's look. Oh, yeah, I can't right now. Um, the other day, I think it said like 15,000 and some, some, something emails that had not been read. And that in itself is like, oh my gosh, do I just delete 15,000 emails or do I go through 15,000 emails? At the beginning of the pandemic, uh, when we were in lockdown at the time, I believe I got to like 72,000. And I realized, well, I have the time right now. <laughs> and I did actually go through a decluttering process and um, unsubscribing process and having this all come full circle. I need to do that again. <laughs> nice. Yes. Okay, Turn off yeah. the red uh, button. I mean, the th red number. Yeah, exactly. It's like <laughs> talk about, you know, grabbing one's attention or... <laughs> We're going to yes. move to segment four while I hold on to a piece of wood. 